Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. I'm down in Homestead, Florida, back at Tommy Crouchfield's place. We're gonna take a look at some amazing animals and get a lesson in handling venomous snakes. You're watching Snake Bites. I'm down in South Florida, back at Tom Crutchfield's amazing sanctuary for animals, where apparently albino iguanas just grow on trees. But these aren't just normal albino iguanas. To know the entire story, Tom Crutchfield produced the very first albino iguana seven years ago, but he imported a second animal, and when he bred those two strains of albinos together, he produced all normal babies. Obviously, there's two strains of an albino, but this animal Animal happens to be the new strain which was just proven out last year. It's called the Crutchfield albino strain and they really look similar but the Crutchfield strain is even brighter and more beautiful. You can start to see the orange coming out of it. What an amazing animal. And Tommy told me an interesting story. He said these guys are so placid where you can just set them down and they'll just stay there forever just like they are in this tree. Believe it or not, during Christmas time he set up a Christmas tree and the only ornaments on the entire entire tree were albino iguanas. Now that's pretty cool. Bill Haas was a legendary venomous snake handler and creator of the Miami Serpentarium. How many times in his life was he bitten by venomous snakes? A, 54, B, 112, or C, 172 times? Go ahead and answer down below in the comments and check back later in the show to see if you have the correct answer. In this week's Reptile Report Spotlight, we'll be highlighting amphibians. Go ahead and check out the URL down below or click on the link in the description. Tom Crutchfield is a true pioneer when it comes to reptiles. His facility is located near Homestead, Florida, and he specializes in the rare and unusual. Many species you'll only see right here at his facility. It's an unbelievable treat to spend time with someone as passionate, as knowledgeable about the animals as Tom is. But I'm here to talk about venomous snakes. Okay, so I'm here with Tom and Al, which are some of the most experienced venomous snake handlers. You guys know I do a lot of reptiles, but I'm not a real experienced venomous guy, so I came to the source, and I want to find out how they handle venomous snakes. All right, well, since I have never been bitten handling a venomous snake, I handle them very carefully, although sometimes it doesn't look very careful. Basically, I have a, a, a deep understanding of the snakes. If you keep venomous snakes, there are three things that you need to never do, ever. Those three things are as follows. Number one, never open a venomous snake cage with your hand. If it has a venomous reptile in it, open it with a snake hook or some other utensil. Second thing is, never service a venomous snake cage, meaning change a water bowl or anything until you take the venomous snake out you secure it into a bucket or a box, and then, and only then, do you change the water or whatever. Do not think that because the snake is in the hide box and you think it's asleep, that you can reach in real quick and get your hand out before you're bitten. A lot of people are bitten like that. Never do that. And the third thing is, never ever hold a venomous snake behind the neck. Only the most experienced should ever do that. Okay, and so what, if you hold it behind the neck, is there a certain technique? I use a pinch grip. Um, all right, now I want you to notice what I just did. All right, my fingers are pinching the back of the jaw bones together. You see that? Because of that, see how it makes the mouth force open? It cannot, if I had that three finger grip. Yeah, because I see most people. Never do a three finger yeah, grip. Yeah, I see most people grabbing them just like that. No, look how long that fang is. See it, see it folded up? If I had a three finger grip, my thumb would be back further. And if it slid up under a little bit, he can bite right through his jaw and embed the fang into you. They'll turn sideways. This is the only way I ever hold a venomous snake. There's no possible way this snake can bite me. Right, because you're forcing the jaws forward anyway. Correct. So there's no way it can Correct. close down it and push through. It can't shake really very well because notice I have the neck, I'm holding the tail, and I even have the bite that were a bigger snake. What I would have done, I would have caught it like this, and I would have done this. And then to, you could to hold milk it. it. If I were milk it. Yeah. All right, Al, so what do you got to put into this? I mean, I know you're uh, you're as good as it gets when it comes to venom. Well, mostly with Tom. I've just been doing the cobras for him, so I've been doing a lot of venom extraction. So, yeah, based on that, it's just, uh, 
you know, simple technique. And that's the thing, right? I mean, you're trying to do the same thing every time, right? I mean, you don't want to it's, throw it's something. It's consistent, you right? Know? So it's just uh, same techniques applied consistently through to each snake. You treat everything as if it's the first one you got to do. You need somebody you can trust doing this. Trust me on that, because he'll turn around and bite you. Tom and Albert have been working together handling hot snakes for many years. In no way would they condone anyone attempting the things that they can do. It's taken them a lifetime to develop that type of knowledge. With that said, this is some crazy <laughs> All right, put him back up. <laughs> guys, that was an amazing display. Can you walk me through exactly what you guys were doing? Because it was obviously choreographed. Well, the whole idea when you pick up a cobra like Al did then is it's very dangerous to do if the cobra is focused on you. So what I was doing was making the cobra focus on me. It's looking at me and facing me, and I'm keeping its attention, and if I move to the right, it'll move to the right. If I move to the left, it'll move to the left, and I had eye contact all the time with the cobra. It's very, very important that I keep the attention of the cobra. If I don't keep the attention of the cobra, he may be interested in Al, yeah. and then when that happens, then I'm going to turn around, and he's going to look at me, and then I'm just going to move my head back and forth like this, so he'll look at my eyes. So he's not going to focus on your arms. Well, if he close. does, I'll have to make a quick movement with my head, so he'll look somewhere else. Either that, or I hold him from underneath. So if I have to, I can just move my arm out of the way and drop him. And now, obviously, you guys are extremely experienced at this. I mean, this takes years of not only handling, but also understanding, right? Yep. I mean, you wouldn't want any yahoos out there just going and handling cobras like this, right? No one, no one should free handle cobras, ever. We did it because you ask us to for that to show you about the behavior of cobras. No one should, ever should try that. I mean, I don't even know how to, I shouldn't even say any more than that. You should not do that. That is not something you should do ever. I tell you what, let's, uh, let's just look at some cool venomous snakes. What do you yeah, think? Well, we got all kinds. Um, how about to show you a little cystic cobra? A, Absolutely. A, a white one. That's pretty cool. Uh, this is, uh, of course, a morph that's bred in captivity. It'd be really, really rare to see this snake in the wild. And this is a a captive raised snake, so it's actually a pretty calm cobra. Can I can I try to you can. handle this one? Okay. So just take me through. I mean, I've handled right, some well, lapids in the past, so I realize I that tail, you know, you're going to want to tail hook. it. You're going to want to tail. You yeah. know, get the hook here. And put it like that. Hold it in front of you. Hold it mm -hmm. well away yep. from your body. Wait, you're right, exactly. Keep putting the hook down. Get it closer mm -hmm. to the head. Yep. The always as it moves, you keep moving. And the you, hook I, down. I know you told me earlier. Always keep an eye on it, right? You have to never not look at the never snake. Never not look at the snake. Focus on the snake. If you take your eyes off the snake, that's where you get bit. Don't do that. Right, got yeah, yeah. And this is a great animal. So, well, let's go ahead and get this girl back before she gets too stressed out and uh, see what else we've got. Take a look at the hood on this cobra. There's just something majestic about being around all these venomous snakes. The varieties of colors, shapes, and sizes is almost baffling, but working with hots is all about experience and living with the risk of being bitten. It's certainly not for the faint of heart. This is the Gaboon Viper. There are two kinds. There's the West African and the East African. This is the West African that has bigger horns. Its the scientific name is Betis rhinoceros, but it is a Gaboon Viper. The East African is Betis gabonica now. They used to be subspecies, but not anymore. Now, Gaboons are interesting because they get very large. They can reach about two meters, and one two meters long, would probably weigh 35 pounds and would have a head probably like this big around. Uh, this snake here is only about two feet long and it has the weight of like a four foot rattlesnake, let's say. Uh, they also have the longest fangs of any venomous snake. They can have fangs in excess of two inches, maybe even two and a half inches long. They're a rather placid snake, like really most snakes, and they really don't want to bite, but their biting capabilities are incredible. They can strike from virtually any position with incredible speed, and incredible force. So it's nothing to trifle with. My gosh, I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, everyone that watches the show always knows I talk about my favorite venomous snake being a Gaboon Viper. And uh, this is an amazing example of one. And anyone that doesn't think that that's truly breathtaking has something wrong with them. You know what I call this? It's one of many animals. A King Cobra is one, an elephant is one, a tiger. The Gaboon Viper, a very large eastern diamondback rattlesnake. I call them monsters of God. Nice. 
Monsters of God. That's a great term. It I is. Think I like that There's term. a book by that name. That's where I got the idea about the Monsters of God. And you know the Earth would be a poor place without the Monsters of God. All right, guys, you might be asking why Christine is here with a mask on and I've got a mask in my hand. Well, we're gonna check out a Siamese spitting cobra. Now, I've always wondered what it would be like to be on the end of a spitting cobra, so this is gonna be an amazing experience. Now, the African spitters spit really accurately and can hit really small objects from quite a ways away. These guys can spit maybe seven or eight feet, but it's a really wide spray, so this is gonna be a must. I'm ready for this. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a bit scared putting my face that close to a spitting cobra. When you're doing it, that shield just doesn't seem like much protection. I don't know guys, that's pretty intimidating just getting that close to your face with the cobra. Now that was pretty cool. Uh, I don't think I'll be doing this uh, anytime soon without a mask. What I have here is one of the only two venomous lizards in the world, of course the Gila monster, or Heloderma suspectum synctum, which is the banded version, which is the more northern territory for them. Now, they happen to have a wicked venom. Now, it's not gonna kill you, but it's certainly gonna ruin a couple weeks of your life. It's gonna cause extreme pain, swelling, and really bad nausea. But they use that venom as a defense mechanism, not as predation. They're truly amazing animals, and I've never really thought that I'd be holding one without restraining it whatsoever. You can see that this animal certainly doesn't want any problems, but I tell you what, I don't wanna be on the business end of that bite. We're gonna end up with an albino diamondback, an eastern diamondback, the largest species of rattlesnake. And this is an albino, and what an absolute beauty. I tell you what, I've learned a lot about venomous snakes and handling them from one of the best in the business. Tom, thanks so much for having us. This was absolutely one of the coolest days ever. I don't know about you guys, but what an amazing experience it was learning so much about handling these animals. And I certainly learned how much skill it takes to deal with animals that can kill you. This was such an awesome time. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Bill Hoff was a legendary venomous snake handler and creator of the Miami Serpentarium. How many times in his lifetime was he bitten by venomous snakes? If you said C 172 times, you're 100% correct. Good job. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. What an amazing time seeing all those animals. I'm so fortunate to have Tom Crutchfield as a friend. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, I was tweeting and Facebooking my way through the entire adventure. So make sure to hit me up over at Snake Bites TV. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites.